Good morning, good night, good afternoon, good whatever time it is. This is Write Me a Film, and today I'm talking about my August reads, reviews, ratings, reasons, and recommendations. I have my coffee, and I'm just going to jump right in. So I kind of read 10 books this month, kind of not, I'll explain. So I read 9 Days. I read Christmas in Chestnut Springs, which is just a novella for the Chestnut Springs series. I read, wait for it, I read the Mindfuck series, which is 5 novellas. I read The Brightest Light of Sunshine and Mile High, so that's kind of where the 10-ish comes in because some are novellas, some aren't, um, but let's just get right into the first book. So first, I read Nine Days. I have a list, like a running list in my journal of books that I want to read, and I found it on there. And I have three months of free Kindle Unlimited, so I'm trying to read as many of the books on that list that are on Kindle Unlimited that aren't on Libby before it runs out and this book was on there. So that's how I ended up reading this book. It's by Jolena Falk, published in 2022. It is 387 pages. The average rating on Goodreads is a 3.65 out of 5 stars. I give this book a 1 out of five stars. This is a hockey romance, if that's what you would like to call it. So this is about Lily, and she's about to lose her battle with depression when she gives herself two weeks or something like that to live when Colin ends up finding her confession journal at nine days left, and he decides that he's going to try and help her see that life is worth living. So it follows them through the nine days. It's dual POV, and we see that he has family issues, she has family issues, they're both in college, he's a hockey player, she's a retired ice skater, but it kind of has nothing to do with any of those things. This book, t to me, this is my own opinion, showed a terrible representation of mental illness and depression and suicidal thoughts, and it honestly felt disrespectful towards that topic. I almost DNF'd this book, but I wanted to see if she died or not. Is that terrible of me to say? Like, that's the only reason I kept reading. The reviews on this book were awful. Awful. And I still kept reading. The grammar, the structural aspect, the plot mistakes that I saw, even just like, I was kind of skimming most of the book, if I'm being honest, and I saw all these mistakes. Like, was there no editor? The plot, the idea, the concept, it was interesting, but reading it was not. Like, the writing sucked, in my opinion. It just wasn't executed properly. Some of the letters that she has in her journal throughout the book were so good, and some of them were so awful, it was very hit or miss. And was this book either one, written by teenage boys, or two, written by seven different people. It was so choppy. It felt like when you were in elementary school when you'd write for like five minutes and then you'd pass your paper to the next person. It was so choppy. Like, it, I'd be like, oh, did I miss seven pages? No, it's the second, it's the next sentence. Like, it's a new paragraph. It just randomly switched to a different topic. And it felt kind of like a knockoff to the deal with the whole friendship situation. I will say the coffee scene was adorable, and I want to do that in my own life. Um, but Lily, the main character, was a walking contradiction. And then Colin, the other main character, was like over dramatic or under serious, depending on what was going on. Um, the whole frog thing, what is that? Like, they didn't even explain it. And then Winter, her best friend, why is she a character? Literally forgot about her halfway through. Again, Aaron, why is he like that? Like, he was weird. And then, like, Lily's dumb. Sorry. I made, like, t a two-part TikTok entire rant on this book, so I go even more if you want to hear even more why I don't like the book, but that seems like enough for me. Next, I read the Chestnut Sp or Christmas in Chestnut Springs. I wanted more of the Eaton Brothers story and just to, like, consume all that I could. Written by Elsie Silver, published in 2023. It's 43 pages. The average rating is a 4.34, and I didn't give it a rating because it's just, it's a holiday novella, and I didn't feel like giving it a rating, um, but it's one chapter of each of the books slash couples from the guy's point of view, and it's Christmas Eve slash Christmas Day, several years after the series ends. Um, it was sweet. I enjoyed bits of their family moments because I feel like we didn't get a lot of those, like, once they're 
happy in their relationships moments in the books, except for the other books, if that makes sense. Like, we saw the old couples in the new couples books. Um, but the whole winter situation was very unbelievable. Like, she definitely would have have to have gone to the hospital, would she have not have? The third book I read was Wait For It. So, Dord reads, she said read it, and I said okay. On TikTok, like, she recommended it. I will read anything she recommends, because she's always usually right on it. Um, written by Mariana Zapata, published in 2016. It's 418 pages. The average rating is a 4.29, and I gave it a 5 out of, or I'm sorry, a 3 out of 5 stars. This is a contemporary romance, and it follows the girl's POV. So we have Diana. She is a hairdresser that just moved into the neighborhood with her two nephews, who she has full guardianship of, and their names are Louie and Josh. So then we have Dallas, who lives across the street and ends up being her nephew's baseball coach. This book is a slow burn. Like, we are over 150 pages in, and they have barely said 20 words to each other, slow burn. I honestly wasn't really rooting for the couple. Like, it was okay. It just didn't even feel like they would be friends for most of the book. Like, the first 200 pages, I'm like, how are they even going to be friends, let alone, like, in a relationship? But it was okay. They were sweet. It just didn't hit for me. The characters were very mundane. They were doing very mundane tasks. And nothing really stuck out to me. It was a forgettable book, but not a bad one. It also was just, like, a little bit too long for me. But I don't have anything really bad to say about it. Just nothing great, either. So, four through eight, I read the Mindfuck series. So, it's a series of five novellas. So, we have The Risk, Sidetracked, Scarlet Angels, All the Lies, and Paint It All Red. So, I live down the street from, like, an independent bookstore, and I walk my dog every day. And the, um, the owner of this store recommended this series, so I thought, why not? Try it out. It's by S.T. Abby, a.k.a. Stabby, published in 2016. It is 638 pages for the book bundle. Like, you can get them in separately um, in the e-version, or they do have all the books together in a physical copy. The average rating is a 4.63 on Goodreads, and I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. And this is a dark romance, my first dark romance, the introduction to dark romance for me. And it's dual POV. So we have Lana Myers, and she is a revenge serial killer. And then we have Logan Bennett, who is an FBI agent on her case, trying to solve her case. I I could talk about this book for hours. Like, so, so good. I loved it. The four main characters are so good, and I love them independently, their personalities, their character development. And then when they come together as a group, so good. How each book reflects a big change and there's a split up and the progression of the story building with the past and the present storylines unfolding and intertwining. The way that it's split up is so good. It's like, I didn't understand at first why is it five novellas, why isn't it just a whole book or a duology or something, but it makes sense why it's split up into five different books. I loved the little like found family aspect. I know that sounds strange in a dark romance, but there is a found family aspect and I loved it. I was literally hooked on page two and it usually takes me like 30% for me to care. And the ending, so good. I will say check trigger warnings though because literally my jaw was on the floor, tears in my eyes at some points. But it was so good. I'm sorry if you can hear my air in the back, but it's literally so hot and it just turned on. But next is The Brightest Light of Sunshine. So I read this book because I saw a ton of videos on TikTok saying that this book gives Johnny and Shannon vibes. So I was like, anything, anything that gives me Johnny and Shannon vibes, I will read. Um, it was written by Lasagna Coney. I don't know if you say that. That's how I said it. Or that's how you say it. Sorry. But... Published in 2023, it's 412 pages. The average rating on Goodreads is a 3.86. I give this book a 2 out of 5 stars. So this is a contemporary romance. It is dual POV. We have Grace, and she is a 22-year-old college student. I think she's an English major, and she's also a ballerina, and she has this traumatizing past that we slowly learn about. Then we have Cal. He is a 30-year-old tattoo artist and best friends with Grace's cousin. 
Grace is a ballet teacher to Cal's four-year-old sister who is, he's basically raising her because his mother is a functioning alcoholic. And this story follows them meeting and becoming friends and more as they work through their personal issues and trauma. Okay, the age gap wouldn't really matter. It's an eight year age gap, not that bad, except why do they meet at a college frat party? Like, why is a 30 year old man at a college frat party? If I saw a 30 year old man at a party, I would leave, I would be scared, I would be traumatized. And she has trauma issues related to men from her past. So how does that work? I don't understand. Um, this also reminds me similar to Nine Days as a low budget version of the deal with the friendships and her situation with men and how they go about it. Um, she calls her dad daddy, which I don't like. It irks me or icks me out. The the grammar and the structural errors were kind of annoying at times. Like there would be like gaps in the book and then the the line there would be holes. Like the actual structure of the page was kind of just messed up sometimes. I will say they handled Grace and Cal, their situations in such a mature level until they didn't. Like, why? Why would you have them be so mature and understanding with each other? And then all of a sudden, ah, actually not. Also, the third act conflict was so lame and it happened in the last 5% of the book. Like, are you kidding me? The, the wording that this man says were so cringe at times and it was supposed to be like flowery and sweet but it was very cringy and I would never want someone to talk to me like that and never so no one no one speaks like that. a man does not talk like that a woman does not talk like that a person does not talk like that I will say it was a refreshing read after the intense book before the mindfuck series before that um but the age gap and the the situation surrounding the age gap it wasn't the age gap itself but the situation with it Dropped it an entire star, specifically the party aspect of the age gap. I will say they were cute as friends, but then the relationship seemed to resolve all of their past issues, and it felt really unrealistic. Also, the book was a little bit too long. It was okay, though. I did make an entire video episode reading both The Brightest Light of Sunshine and the Mindfuck series, if you want my opinions as I'm going through the book and you're like seeing my thoughts and emotions as I read it, it's like two videos down. And the final book I read, I actually finished it like a couple hours ago today, was Mile High, which is the first book in the Windy City series. Again, I'm trying to get through my Kindle Unlimited books while I still have Kindle Unlimited for free. Written by Liz Tomford, published in 2022. It is 603 pages. The average rating on Goodreads is a 4.10. I give this book 3 out of 5 stars. This is a hockey romance, and it's dual POV. So we have Stevie, and she is a flight, a flight attendant. A flight attendant. Oh my gosh, she's a flight attendant for the Chicago hockey team. And then we have Xanders, who's like the bad boy assistant captain for the hockey team. Stevie really struggles with insecurities surrounding her body, and Xander is tired of his fake persona he has to put on when he's actually apparently a nice guy underneath, and they kind of form a connection through those two things a little bit. Um, Stevie was kind of boring, but I do appreciate the body insecurities aspect and the way that it was written how it was handled through her eyes and also how Xander approached the situation and the moments and scenes that they had revolving around that aspect. I think it was handled really well. I appreciate how it was perceived. Um, and then Xander, he was an asshole. Like literally I wanted to DNF at pay 3% in because of how much of an asshole he was. But he did get better, and I did enjoy seeing him make actual changes and steps towards proving that he could grow, proving to Stevie that he could grow. And a lot of the times I feel like it's all talk, no action, but like he actually did things to change himself, and I do appreciate that aspect. 
I will say the mental health situation was good until it wasn't. It felt like it got dropped halfway through. I loved Rosie and the shelter scenes. So cute. The Madisons, the husband and wife, and then the two kids. Very cute. And I, I found it refreshing that his best friend was already married with like a family situation. Because I feel like a lot of times in interconnected standalones, especially especially like the first one until he finds his mate or whatever they they're like not a family guy and it was interesting to see that aspect of the uh, of the book if that makes sense um they were just sweet and I loved their little side story the brother, yes. Indy, yes. And it was very sweet to show that they care. And I'm interested to read their story. I'm going to start it probably later today. But this book was so long for so, for no reason. For, for no reason. Like, it was cute. But we could cut out 250 pages and it would have been better. I, I, yeah, if you cut out 250 pages, 100% would be better. They both had mommy issues and, like, family issues that they had to resolve. Uh, it was good, but overall the book was forgettable. It dragged on, and especially the third act conflict was forever long. There were so many repetitive phrases and descriptions. It's like, okay, we get it. She has curly hair. He has brown eyes. Like, we get it. You don't need to repeat it every single time that they see each other. The chemistry was there, but it felt weird after the third act. And they just had so many, I don't even know if you'd call it communication issues or just like that they didn't speak issues. I don't know. Stevie gave, oh, I'm not like other girls. And Xander was still kind of like a rich snob at the end of the book. But I'm glad that they did get their happy ending. And it was, it was sweet. I I have a feeling the other books are better, though, but it was a good introduction to the series, I would say. And I would also say that a lot of interconnected standalones, the first book isn't the best, but we got to get there somehow. And that was everything I read in August. So once again, I read Nine Days, Christmas in Chestnut Springs, Wait For It, The Mindfuck Series, The Brightest Light of Sunshine, and Mile High. It was a good month of reading. Um, I felt Oh, this was the, the, no, it wasn't, never mind. I was going to say it's the first month that I read on my Kindle, but it's not. I lied. I have read on it the month before also, but it was a pretty good reading month. I had some okay books. I had a really, really good series, and I'm happy with what I read. I hope you got maybe a recommendation or a non-recommendation, and that's all I have to say for my August reads, and, um... I like to make updates as I'm reading them on my TikTok, so if you want. I love getting, like, up-to-date updates, if that makes sense, of other people, so I like to do it too. Um, then go there, but that's all I have for today. Go read the Mindfuck series, if you can handle it. It's so good, and I want to read more dark romance, I think. I don't know what I thought dark romance was, but I did not think it was that, and I'm excited to get into more mystery aspects of dark romance anyway i hope you have a great whatever time it is that was write me a film august reads bye